Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and today we are officially on summer break. So to celebrate, we are heading out to my favorite antique store in Luckett's, Virginia. I have a really great summer crock pot meal for you, and we are going to be making our own farmhouse stamped books. So today is Saturday, May 30th, and we are going to spend the day kind of hanging around the house and bumming around. So I have a very simple outfit today. I am wearing a white tie waist t-shirt from J. Crew, a light yellow cardigan from Loft, some distressed crop jeans from Target that I found a few years ago, and my new railroad striped Ked sneakers that I found on Amazon. We will be heading out the door to the Old Luckett store this morning, but before I go, I want to get my crock pot going with a super simple summer Saturday meal. This recipe could not be any simpler. It's one of those meals that will cook in the crock pot all day and make your house just smell so good. So the first thing you are going to need is some barbecue sauce and this sweet baby Ray's hickory and brown sugar sauce is my new absolute favorite. You're going to need some peach salsa, any brand will do, and you will need some pork loins. I really like these Smithfield pork loins and I have two of them. So to help everything cook evenly, I like to cut my pork loins up in sections and then I place them in the bottom of my crock pot, season generously with salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then cover the top with a 16 ounce bottle of barbecue sauce and a 16 ounce jar of peach salsa. Put the lid on top and cook on high for five to six hours. I have not been out to my favorite antique store here in Luckett's, Virginia in months. And if you guys have been watching, you know that I am working on our living room and I'm really trying to find just something different to hang on the walls or just a different piece to add to the room. This is where I have found so many great things for our home and it's where I always find my favorite vintage doors. We're going to take a quick spin through their spring design house where I always seem to either find something special to bring home or find a great idea to try on my own. The design house is always decorated to perfection and it has a real farmhouse feel and it's just one of those places that sometimes I think I can just shut the door and move right in and not change a thing. I didn't bring anything home with me today, but I did see a few pieces that I am really thinking about. One was a framed quote of Bob Dylan's that I really loved and I carried it around with me for a while. Another thing were these I love you to the moon and back pillows. And there also was an old vintage Underwood typewriter. If you didn't know, I collect old typewriters and I am always on the lookout to add a new one to my collection and I have been thinking about this one since we left and I probably will end up going back next week to take another look and maybe bring it home with me. As you can see, it's in pretty good shape. It's not functional right now, but my husband thinks that he can probably get it working. So I will be sure to let you guys know if I break down and go back for it. Spending any time in Luckett's is one of my most favorite things to do. It's where I find so much inspiration and creative ideas. So we have been working on our living room and we are almost done. So a full tour video will be coming up very soon. But I shared a picture on Instagram a little while ago and got so many questions about these stamped books. You can find them all over Pinterest and Etsy, but you can really easily make them for yourself. I use these types of books all around the house to add height and interest to displays on coffee tables and side tables. They are super easy to make. You just need a few supplies that you can find at any craft store and most likely in your basement. The only tough thing about this project is deciding on a lowercase rubber stamp font that you like best. I have a larger and smaller set. Both are by Reflections, which I found at Michael's. 
I will put links to everything from this video in the info section down below so you can easily find them and check them out for yourself. Wood mounted stamps are still my favorite and I keep mine together in a craft case that I also found at Michael's. You will also need an ink pad in any color that you choose. I use a pad from Colorbox in black that you can find in any craft store. So if you don't have a basement full of old books like I do, you can pick up some at the dollar store that will really work great for this project. To begin, remove the front and back covers of each book down to their title page. You will be stamping on the binding of each book, so be sure the bindings are clean. I always write out on a post-it note what I will be stamping because you will be stamping it backwards from the edge of the book and this helps with spelling errors. Gather all your stamps together and open your ink pad. Remember, you are stamping each word on the right edge of the book from the last letter going forward. Be sure to keep your stamp edges clean of ink so you get a clear letter each time. You can set yourself up to stamp in one of two ways. The first is securing the book you are stamping between two other books like you see here, or you can use what I think is an easier method and place the book between your knees. From this perspective, it is so much easier to align your stamps and keep everything straight. To keep the stamps from getting all gunked up with ink between each word and before storing, I wipe down each stamp with a baby wipe. So once the stamping is all complete, I take each stack and I wrap the opposite edge with some twine and tie it in a nice bow and then they are ready for display. I really love the way these books look around the house. I think it's such a cute way to add a little something special to family photos. I think these would be great stamped with your children's birth dates or your own anniversary dates too. So it's about five or six hours later and the pork is all done cooking. We are having this on rolls with coleslaw, so I'm going to shred it all up just using a fork and knife and adding in some more sauce as needed. Barbecue always smells incredible and by using two pork loins, it made enough so that we can have it for dinner tonight and also put some in the freezer for a meal for another day. I will be sure to put all the details for this recipe in the information bar down below. So thank you so much for watching today. If you are new here, I hope you will subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other and I will see you again soon. Bye!